inside. Because you're running right back in there where some big is going to hit you. My name's Howard Mudd, offensive line coach. Been in the NFL for a long time. Uh, total player and coach, about 50 years. I actually have a different kind of perspective about coaching. Uh, I didn't come into co uh, coaching wanting to be a coach necessarily. I thought I was experiment. While I was a player, I went down to Stanford University and volunteered in spring football. And they, they were going to go to this pro football style and they wanted some help. They had this guy named Jim Plunkett who was the quarterback and and so uh, I stumbled around there and really really liked coaching and I was coached by a, a great coach when I when I played. His name was Tiger Johnson and he made me think about what I was doing. My playing career came to an end and one of those guys that was the that I helped at Stanford became the head coach at Cal, Mike White. I started coaching over there because I thought, well, I'm going to try this stuff and see if I like it. Well, I've never looked back. Um, I love coaching. I'm one of those people that would tell you that in coaching or in football, uh, in scouting, whatever, it's only something you do because you have to. I grew up, Muhammad Ali was the same age as I am. So, he was my hero for a couple of reasons. One, he stood up and said, I don't want to go to the army. But then the rest of it was that, you know, his, his exceptional uh, quickness and all that stuff. He stung like a bee, all right? And he knocked a lot of people out. Okay, so I've used that in my own, my own coaching, not necessarily Muhammad Ali, because they don't remember who it is, but there's, you know, there's a lot of boxers. And I use boxing in, in pass protection a lot. When you put your hands on a guy, it's to keep him at a measured distance. The boxer does this to keep, and you notice I don't straighten my arm out. He does, the, the, the jab is like this, it's not way out like that. That's the jab. I want to keep you at the exact distance where I can then finish you off. Okay, so that's the measured distance. And first touch wins. My defensive line coach, Tom Pratt, he lectured to my guys and I lectured to his in the off season. He talked to him about what I'm looking for is I want to touch you first. The guy that touches the other guy first in pass rush or pass protection wins. I mean, you have a chance. So it's all about timing, you know, and it's about keeping that guy the distance I want him. It's really sometimes it's so that I, I can slow myself down so that I can then regain my balance. I put my hand on you because I want to slow myself down. I want to keep you where I want you. It has nothing to do with how hard you hit him. It's all about timing. So if you think of the, of the boxer and think of the jab, that's what it's about. It's to keep the, guys, keep the guy off balance and keep him at the exact distance that I want him so that I can then execute the next part. Some of those things, and there's two things that I'll, I'll say, and I'm going to, I'm going to give this to a quarterback which is Drew Brees. And I went to New Orleans Saints the year after we, they beat us in the Super Bowl. Went down there, we're in the OTAs, and I, and I said, Drew, you're a guy that, you know, San Diego thing and all that stuff, and there's a lot of people that play the position and fail at your position. And yet, the little tight window and you see a guy coming into it and you're, you make that throw. I said, what, what is it that you think about? And didn't, I, he, you could snap your finger how quickly he said it. He said, trust and confidence. I trusted my read and had confidence I could make the throw. Now, if you watch him play, he plays like that all the time. And, you know, is it a tight window? Sure. And, of course, I was a, around a pretty good one. And, you know, that guy, that guy did, did the same kind of thing uh, that Peyton Manning got. Well, um, the guys that don't do that at that position you can see. Well, offensive linemen are no different. You know, they're athletes too. They have to decide things too. They have to be smart too. They have to be confident. So you see the guy that goes after someone and he's successful at least at closing a distance, at uh, uh, making a block, but it's usually a decision that has to be made, you know, in the speed and then they respond to the task and it's sudden and it's not because they can run fast. Most of the time a guy takes a good development at that position, there's so much to learn, so much intellect that goes into it, so much training, so much discipline to play the position. It's not an instinctive position. 
It's not instinctive. You don't see the object of the game. So you get a guy that comes from one of those other programs. The real big deal was Larry Allen went to this school in California where they played with tennis shoes. And he was there and he ran over everybody and that was a big deal and he's now in the Hall of Fame. But there's other great big guys that end up in a school because for a lot of reasons. Maybe they were six foot six and weighed 190 pounds, now they're, they weigh 275 or they weigh 300 or something like that. Um, and they show some promise. If they, they show some athleticism, some balance, maybe the leverage is missing because they're so big. Um, but you see some, some combativeness as a scout at, with this guy. You know, you want, you're looking for small things that he can do. It might just be an assignment. Usually it's technique, but it's, you know, sticking your head in the right place on a run. Getting out of your stance more quickly because you're not thinking. But I say you'd be patient with that guy and keep, keep after him, keep after him. I will tell him this, I will keep coaching you as long as you keep trying. The minute you quit, you quit trying, I'm going to quit coaching you. But as long as you're trying, I'm going to keep coaching you. And often I'm thinking of this vision in my head where a guy's an offensive lineman, and he goes out there, and he's a little too aggressive, and he drops his head, and the guy runs right by him, and all that stuff. And I give him a clue and say, look, uh, Charlie Brown, go on out there and make that guy run over you. You're a basketball player. Make him run over you. The hoop's right there. There, there he is. Make him run over you, and all of a sudden he does it, and it's a victory for him. Well, then that builds on the next thing and on the next thing. If you make something out of that guy, that guy will be so grateful that he learned something that he had no clue about that he'll play hard forever. One thing that I would say that is, as far as coaching, it's uh, the relationship I've had with people, whether it's coaching uh, administrative people, scouts, all those kinds of things. I coached all over the NFL. Um, and um, it's been a rich life that I've had and I like it.